pray this morning, O Lord God, that as we leave this place, O Lord, with this meeting has ended, I pray, Father God, this is my prayer, is that when we leave, O Father, we will have the very same testimony of the Apostles, O Lord God, when they found themselves on the road to Mount O Lord, they said, did not our hearts burn within us when we spoke unto us? I pray that the word of God will cause the hearts of your people of God to burn for you, O God. And we will be convicted and convinced of the truth of God's word which sets us free. Lord God, we give you praise. Lord, we honor. We give you worship, O oh God. For who is there, O oh Lord God, except you? O oh Lord God, we thank you this morning. We give you the worship this morning. You are El Shaddai. El, El, Yom. Brobachia, Rabachia, Sotopa. Vem a nos chamar para cas por obras de atalho vasto da conta da cruza. Hoje, how we long for you, how we yearn for you, O God. Since the Father said, O God, is the dear branch and arm of the water, so, O God, do our souls thirst for you. Declare, O Lord God, that. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be full. I thank you this morning that we shall be full with the bread of heaven, O oh God. The blessed name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I yield, O oh Lord God, myself to the authority of your Spirit. I yield, O oh Lord God, my mind, body, and spirit the authority and the leading of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I come up against every thought, every imagination that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. Lay hold of it, captivate it in the name of Jesus. I bring it to subjection to the knowledge of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. 
It's so good to be in church. Amen. It's so good to be in the house of God this morning. Amen. Praise God. I want to share with you this morning along the lines of faith. And I want to encourage you to open your Bibles to the book of Romans, the 10th chapter. Romans chapter number 10. And I want to read verse number 17. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Now when you start, you read from verse 16. The Apostle Paul writes and he says, But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? Lord, who has believed our report? So in verse 17, you can highlight this in your Bible. The Bible says, So then, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So it is important, especially in the day and age that we are living in, we find that many people have suffered shipwreck. Many folk have, have suffered shipwreck. Why? Because they don't have a continual flow of the Word of God in their lives. They don't hear the Word of God frequently. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So in the world that we face, and even if we look at our world today, there are many people that are living in fear. The world will, for as long as you live, and as long as I live, and as long as our children and our grandchildren and great-grandchildren live, there will always be opportunities for fear. The world will give you a multitude of opportunities for fear. I want you to embed that in your heart, embed that in your mind, so that you know that. What we're facing now at the moment, worldwide, we are facing a pandemic. And we find that many, 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 many believe this is a divine opportunity for us to exercise our faith. Yeah, yeah, amen. I mean, I'm hearing the voices of Jesus echoing, the voice of Jesus echoing, his words echoing, brother, his words echoing. Where is your faith? When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith? When the Son of Man comes, what will you be busy with? Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. So number one, that's the first point I want to make to you is that the world will give you multitudes of opportunities to fear. But as believers, we do not operate as the world operates. When the rest of the world Amen. is in fear, we are in faith. Amen. Now faith is something the world does not have. Because the world does not have the word of God. The world has its own word. Come up somebody. The world has its own word. That's why the world operates the way it does. The world thinks the way it does. But as believers, we have a different way in which we operate. We think differently. We speak differently. We operate differently. Whilst everybody is running around in fear and a panic stricken, not so with us. Because we have received the word of God which says, Peace I give you, my own peace give I you, not as the world give, give I unto you. So we have the peace of God. The peace of God which passes all understanding, which keeps our hearts and our minds together. Say amen to that. Now, brothers and sisters in Christ, we just read now that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. My question to you is, what is the opposite of faith? It's fear. So if faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, that means that fear has a source too. So where does fear 
come from? Fear comes from hearing the word of the enemy. You got that? Fear comes from hearing the words of the enemy. All the information that you receive from the world and you allow entrance into your heart will bring you fear. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. If you look at your own life, having been born again, look at your own life and consider how many times you heard a report that caused you to fear. And when you step over to fear, the things that you were fearing or expecting to happen never happened. Why? Because God is showing you that you are not supposed to operate in fear. You're supposed to operate in faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. That means God is the author of faith. And Satan, the devil, is the author of fear. Hebrews 11 verse 6 tells us this. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to him must believe that he is, that he exists, and that he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. So, if you want to please God, listen, listen, your tears will not please God. Your crying will not please God. What will please God is your faith. So when you go through the tests and the trials of life, this life that we have as believers is a life that's full with tests. But here's the thing, God doesn't first wait for you to pass the test to qualify you. He has qualified you before the test. The reason you go through the test is so that your faith can be refined. So that when you, when you come through, you find that your faith is precious as gold. It's not something that's cheap. Come on, somebody. So your faith gets tested of what quality it is. The Apostle Paul speaking to the church at Corinth says, everybody's work will be tested with fire to see of what quality it is. Hallelujah. So that means that fear comes by hearing and hearing the word of Satan. Did you hear what I said? Fear, fear, F-E-A-R, fear, comes by hearing the word of Satan. Because when you keep on hearing what the world is feeding you, you're going to get garbage in your spirit. And then the, the result of that is you're going to have garbage in your life. But when you hear the word of God, you receive faith. Come on, somebody. And faith causes you to look beyond what is and call those things which be not as though they were. And that is how God operates and that is how we are to operate. Hallelujah. I believe and therefore I speak. The Bible says, God your hearts with all diligence for all the flow of the issues of life. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If you ever want to know what's in a person's heart, listen to how they speak, what they speak. They speak fear, 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 fear. Doubt, 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 doubt. Six, 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 six. Quote, 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 quote. Bro, 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 bro. Because that's what's in the heart. But once your heart is settled in the truth of God's word, and you begin to speak the word from your heart. It's as though God Himself is speaking. And Philip asked to, uh, Jesus, He says, Show us the Father. He says, Philip, have I given you so long yet you ask me, Show us the Father? The words that I speak, I speak not by my own authority, but the Father in me does the words. Because once you become one with the word, you understand that when you speak, it is not you And the words that you do, he does. By his spirit, he will say amen to that someone. Ladies and gentlemen, as much as we will have opportunities to fear, the opportunities to exercise your faith are greater. Amen. Ah, Jesus. I think I'm going to 
this. I said, as much as there will be opportunities to fear, the opportunities to exercise your faith are greater. Because greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. I'm going by faith. I'm not going by fear. I'm not going by what the world told me. I'm not going by what tradition has told me. I'm not Job 3. And I want you to read 
Job 3 verses 25 to 26 for me, the top of your voice. Are you all there? Job 3 verse 25 just before the book of Psalms. Job, are you there? Are you there? All right, I want you to read verses 25 to 26 for me. One, one, two, go. One more time. Job was an upright man. He was a man of integrity. However, this was, this was the thing that Job lacked. Job feared. He lived in fear. He says here, the thing I greatly feared has come upon me. That means he, he was meditating on this. This was his fear. The thing I fear greatly has come upon me and what I dreaded, what I was so afraid of, has happened to me. I am not at ease, nor am I quiet. I have no rest for trouble comes to me. When you choose to fear, you open the door to trouble in your life. That's what Job was saying. Look at Job 1 verse 5. The Bible says, so it was when the days of feasting had run their course. This is speaking about Job, about Job's, uh, 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 Job's children. They would party. They would fear. Sorry. They would walk feasting and partying and having a jolly good time. And Job would be afraid that this, while they were partying, they sinned against God. Watch it. So it was when the days of feasting and run their course, the job would send and sanctify. He would send for his children and sanctify them, and he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of all of them. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and be cursed and, and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job did regularly. Job's problem was he he had no and that's the problem we face in the world today. There's no order. Parents have no control over their children. Children are running the house and not the parents. Had Job had his children in order, they wouldn't be feasting and drinking and getting married and sinning. My question to us as parents is, what are we bringing about? Yeah. 
here, then whose coffee is it really? Does God receive it? You see that? So Job operated in fear. He was meditating. And that was his fear. And that befell him. So whatever you are meditating upon, that will befall you. Come and talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. If there's one thing that the enemy wants you to fear, he wants you to, this is the one thing, this is the single thing that he wants you to fear. He wants you to fear that the word that God has given you will not come to pass. Because he gets you to question, does God really want to heal me? Does God really want me wealthy? Does God really want me complete? Does God really want me whole? Does God really want to be blessed? He'll get you to question all that. And here's the thing, he cannot curse you. But he uses you to curse yourself for what you speak. Because he comes to those thoughts. And as you're long as you allow those thoughts and those words to go, to enter your heart, they become your meditation. And then your meditation becomes your confession. And then your confession becomes your, your, your habits. It becomes your habitat. It becomes your environment. It becomes your life. Brothers and sisters in Christ, God has called us to live by faith. When you look in St. Luke's Gospel, chapter number 2, verse 51, find that in chapter 2, Jesus is brought before Simeon in the temple and presented before him. He's dedicated to the Lord. And then we find that Jesus at the age of 12 is found amongst the scholars. And then Mary and Joseph come to Jesus and they, they kind of reprimand him, saying, you know, we've been looking for you all over and we were worried. And he said, didn't you know that I should be in my father's house? My question is, how many believers do we have in this day and in this hour that are asking that thing to say, don't you know that I should be in my father's house? Don't you know that I should be doing my father's business? Jesus understood that the boy at the age of 12 
your life. So when Satan comes with suggestion, you push away the suggestion by faith. And then you take the word of God and what do you, what do, you do with the sword? You slay those giants. David cut off the head of Goliath with his own sword. But David gave, the sword was in David's mouth. That's why when David, when Goliath threatened David, David spoke back and he said, This day, the Lord God will deliver your head into my hands. So what David actually prophesied what he would do. And that was a word, that was, that's the word of God, that's a soul. So he slew Goliath, and Goliath fell. He took Goliath's own soul and he cut off his head. And you find that that sword was kept. And when Saul was pursuing the life of David, you find that David ran to the temple. And he came to the priest. And he came to take what? He came to take the sword of the lion. I'm here to tell you, you got to take the word of God. Always. Not just for today. But the same word you used yesterday. It's the same word you're going to use today. It's the same word you're going to use tomorrow. Can you say that?
You see, the mother of the all is the one that you look into. And you make the image that mother look, look good. You make that image that you see them look good. But the image that I see in this mother makes me look good. Because the image I see in this mother is not one that I create. It's not one that I could ever create. There's no makeup I could ever use. Because the image I see in this mother is the Son of God and His name is Jesus. It is He who completes me. It is He who satisfies me. Hallelujah. We find in the book of John, the gospel, the gospel of John, John chapter 20, I'm closing shortly, John chapter 20. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ, do not give in to fear. John 20. I want to tell you this morning that fear will keep you in a prison. Fear will keep you in a prison. You with me? Tell the neighbor. Fear will imprison you. Yeah. Fear will imprison you. John's Gospel, chapter 20, reading from verse number 19. Then the same day at evening, in the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, when the disciples were assembled, the same day at evening, in the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, when the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews. Why were the doors shut? Why were the doors shut? Fear of the Jews. Fear what could happen to them. Why did they fear? Understand the political climate at that time. Rome had already invaded the Jewish territory. So they had the Roman, the Romans as a threat to them. Because whoever did not want to, whoever didn't want to subject to the authority of Rome was either imprisoned or killed. Secondly, most important, was that the Jews at that time were trying to hold on to a heritage that they had as God's people, holding on to whatever religious laws and customs that they had. So they thought that they could save that. But Jesus said, Blessed is he. He who loses his life will find it. But he who seeks to save his life will lose it. So they had the Jews. And also, very, 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 very most important, they walked with Jesus, who was their teacher, their shepherd. The scripture says, strike the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. They saw him being tortured. They saw him being beaten. They saw him being ridiculed and spat upon. They saw him being kicked and beaten. They saw him the way of God happened. They saw him be crucified on the cross. They saw how the nails were driven into the palms of his hands and into his feet. 
saw his body broken, bruised, beaten, naked, not dignified as we see in the picture when he put a napkin. He had nothing. Stripped bare. They saw how he cried out and said, I thirst. They saw how they gave him vinegar to drink. That would never quench that thirst. They saw how the spear was driven to his side from which flowed the water and the blood. They heard They saw how his head then died. He gave up his spirit and he died. They saw him die. They saw him being taken from the cross. They saw him being laid in the tomb. And now they were faced with the report of some woman who rose up in the morning to go and embalm the body with sweet smelling perfume. And when they got there, there was no body. And now they also have to put up with the story. When the disciples came back and they said, listen, it is true what the woman had told us. His body is not in the tomb. The tomb is empty. But they know what they saw. Hence you find they came and they gathered together. They, they, they assemble together. That's why Hebrews 10.25 says, Do not neglect the gathering of the saints. Don't neglect the gathering of the saints because it's at the gathering of the saints where we can empower each other, where we can encourage each other, where we can pray together, where we can sing to God, to God together, where we can praise God together. There were those that were there that said, Yes, we believe the report that He is risen because the ones on the road that were on the road now said our hearts burnt within us when we heard him talk and we know that he is the master and that is Jesus. So there was great joy in the house because never has it been heard of. So they were afraid because the Jews had said that it was the disciples who stole the body out of the tomb. That's why they feared. But they forgot the words of Jesus when he was taken out. Before his crucifixion, in John 18, verse 8, when they were asking, when Jesus asked him in verse 7, Who are you seeking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. John 18, verse 8, Jesus said, I have told you that I am He. Therefore, if you seek me, let these go their way. You're not here. Let these go their way. That the saying might be fulfilled. Which he spoke of whom? Of those whom you gave me, I have lost none. That means Jesus but not it was a proclamation by Jesus. Nobody would touch them. Nobody would do them any harm. But yet they still fear and they locked themselves up. How about somebody? Remember what Satan said to God. He said, How can I touch Job when you put a hedge of protection around him? Satan understands there's a hedge of protection around you. It's the blood of Jesus. He cannot remove it. So fear kept them locked up. And you find that whilst they were assembled, Jesus appeared unto them. Now the room, the door was probably shut. Probably like some of you when you're afraid that somebody's going to come into your house. You 
put the gate, you put a security gate, you put a yellow lock, you put an alarm sensor, you put probably the wardrobe, and you put the cupboard, and you put everything against the door so nobody can come in. But let me tell you something about my Jesus. He doesn't need to come in through the door. The Bible says he just appeared in the midst of the room. Hallelujah. And when he appeared unto them in verse 21 of chapter 20 of John's Gospel, Jesus said, Peace to you, as the Father has sent me. I also sent you. Aha, I thought they were afraid. That's how they were locked up. But Jesus tells them, No, the Father sent me, I'm sending you too. Just in the same way the Father sent me. That means nobody will touch you. Come on, somebody. Amen. Nobody will touch you. Amen. Nothing shall harm you. Amen. And when they had said this, you see that? That's why when you, when you, when you come to church, he, the Lord by His Word and by His Spirit breathes upon you. And He breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. So he gave them life. He gave them life so that they could go and witness. To go and witness. To witness what? To witness what John said in John's first chapter number one, verse one, he said that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon in our hands and handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. Say amen to that somebody. Amen. In his presence is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody say, I'm a product of faith. I operate by faith. I don't operate by what I see, by what I hear, by what I feel, by what I can smell. I operate by the word of God. And 
God took me to Galatians 6, verse number 7. He says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while being good. For in due season, I like that. In due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Amen. You see that that's why you gotta guard your heart from fear. Amen. Don't be a job when you offering you, you you're presenting your offerings but you're doing it in fear, it won't work because when you operate in fear, who operates in fear? Satan. So who, who does that offering glorify? The offering of faith glorifies God. Come on somebody. Amen. That's why he says, do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have, what? As we have? As we have? What's that word? I can't hear you. What's that word? What's that word? Do you remember I used the same word in the beginning of the service? Do you remember that? There's an opportunity for fear, but there's an even more opportunity for you to exercise your faith. And he says now, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Amen. So when I began to look at this in the fridge, and I actually I took the egg out and I looked at it. And the Lord began to speak to me. What is in the egg? What is in this? There's life in this thing. That's what God told me. He says, look at this thing. You may look at it there, but there's life in this thing. There's a life in it. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 38, the Bible says, But God gives it a body as He pleases, and to each seed its own body. So, there's life in this thing. So, where does that life come from? Come on, somebody. The life in the seed, where does it come from? It comes from God. He's the giver of life. So there's life, and it's God who gives it a body. Every seed has its body, but it's God who gives it life. It's God who gives it the body. And then God showed me these three things. You got a choice. There's a choice that you have when you have the seed. You can either eat the seed now and you can starve tomorrow. You can eat the seed now and you'll starve tomorrow. Or you can just keep the seed there and nothing will happen. And the longer you keep it, you're going to end up with an knock. How many of you have ever smelled egg knock? You know what's egg knock? A mature egg. Have you ever broken open an over mature egg? Come on somebody, huh? it smells lovely, isn't it? It's awful, it's awful, and that's why we find sometimes we're holding on and then we find our lives become like a knock. Come on somebody. Oh, I can take it as it is, and I can go and put it at the right place, uh, sorry, at the right place. And allow it to brew there until the right time. Because there's conditions to it. There are conditions. It has to be in the right place. I mean, I can't take this egg and go put it under the back pillow and say, oh, I'm brooding over this thing. <laughs> day after day, I'm sleeping on this thing and expect something to happen. It's never going to happen. The conditions are not right. 
Sabar and our youth for the hen. Neither our good and bear by the hen. And allow the hen to incubate it. That's how we sow to the spirit. The spirit incubates it. The spirit moves over that seed. Because it's the spirit that gives life. The flesh profits nothing. Are you getting what I'm saying? And then you find in due season you will reap if you faint not. In due season it hatches. And you know what now? Now when it hatches, I give it time. See, there's no time. And the amazing thing, when you look at the egg, it's got a hard shell, it's got a hard outer thing. And when you look at it, you think, hey, it's so hard. But you don't realize that there's life in it. And so it is with our lives when we, when we look at giving to the Lord. We focus so much on how hard things are currently, but what we fail to realize is that when we break through that hardship, there's life. Yeah. And the way to break through the hardship is by sowing the seed. Amen. Yeah. And when that seed hatches and the, the right time comes, instead of me having eaten the egg myself by my lonesome, stingy, mingy self, when it is hatched, I can feed not just my family, but I can feed extra people too. I mean, you try, you try with your own home. Go buy a whole chicken and cook it. And you tell me in one meal setting you finish the chicken yourself. Then you are glad and you are, you are only on this earth. You are not eating to live, you are living to eat. But that whole chicken, if you, I mean, think, think, think logically. Like today's Sunday, some of you probably got a whole chicken and you're going to roast or a whole chicken you're going to make curry, whatever it is. But that whole chicken, in one meal sitting, you'll have it for lunch, you're going to have some for supper tonight. You're probably going to have some for tomorrow. That's what I'm trying to get across to you, is that when you eat it, you can't feed anybody. But when you give it to the right place, the right time, you cause God's timing, the Kairos time of God, to cross parts with your Kronos time, your chronological time, something happens. Now God returns it to you that you have to give away and you've got plenty in store. That's how it works. So I don't know, you know, just something I thought very, very interesting that God showed me with the egg. And I thought I want to tell a lot of people about the egg story. That God spoke to me in my fridge. You see, so God, if you're sensitive enough, God will speak to you through simple things. Amen. And when you are a faithful person, you'll find that even if you have to drop your seed, it won't break.
life comes from you. Lord God, you commanded us in your word, it was written in your word, that we should remember you, the Lord our God. For it is you, O oh Lord God, who gives us the power to create wealth. All the wealth, everything that we have, the possessions that we have, all comes from you. This morning, Father God, as a church, we stand united as your people. We make this vow, we make this declaration, and I want you to say this with me. Heavenly Father, as you cause me to increase with possessions and wealth, I vow today to honor you with my wealth. My possessions and all the first fruits of my increase. I honor you as being my source. I will not forget that you are the Lord, my God, who causes me to prosper. I thank you, Lord, for giving me life. I thank you, Lord, for supplying all my need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Father God, and Father God, as my wealth and possessions increase, I will not allow my love for you and honor for you and honor to you to diminish because I love you more than life itself. I thank you, Father, that right now, as I so give my time and my offering into your house, the devourer is rebuked for my sin. I thank you, Father, for opening the windows of heaven upon my life. I see your blessing coming forth in overflow. And there's no room enough to contain it. Because I am blessed by Almighty God. I am too blessed to be stressed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Ghost, rest in the fire of each and every one of you. Both now and forevermore, the Lord God prospered you and caused you to increase, caused His face to shine upon you. The Lord God keep you in the power of His hands. May the Lord God Almighty cause you to be exceedingly fruitful in the land that He has given you. Go forth and prosper in the name of the Lord Jesus. And the grace of Christ be with you. In Jesus' blessed name, angels of God, go before the people of God to speak. Prosper them, protect them, and keep them safe. In Jesus' blessed name, I seal them in the blood of Jesus. And all God's people say, Amen. So you're offering sanitize your hands as you exit the church from the exit of that side. Don't use the same entrance that we came in. Amen. As you sow every night or every people, whenever you give to the Lord, I trust you receive something from you. Amen. You pray the word Amen. and you speak the word over your seat. I mean, you take it and you go look for the scriptures that have to do with giving to God and finances. And you 
pray that. God says, remind me of my word. Remind me of my promise. You must remind me. You're a covenant to God. You say, God, this is what I get. And I'm giving you. And Lord, you say this and you start speaking. You speak word. You're speaking life over your seed. You see, many times people just love that people with uh, Speak over you. Life. Power of life and death. 